It's great to be here with you all talking about the web, the future, Next.js, Vercel. Ooh, I'm here for it. It is such an honor and privilege to be a part of this and talk to you. So I'm here today to talk to you about some fun stuff. Uh, but before we get ahead of ourselves, let me do a quick introduction. Uh, my name is Tejas. That's pronounced like advantageous for those of you who may struggle to say it. Uh, it is definitely not Tejas or, you know, anyway. But um, whether or not I'm advantageous, we'll find out at the end of the, the talk. And I'm the director of developer relations at a company called Zeta. Um, Zeta is a serverless database focused on developer experience. Like we're trying to give like, you know, high premium Vercel quality DX to databases, data infrastructure, search engine, the data, the whole data layer, right? Um, but you know, that's not what the talk is about. The talk today is about enabling data at massive scale with Next.js, enabling data at massive scale with Next.js. And you know, that may sound very buzzwordy and what have you, if you're judging me, don't anyway no but it's so what what does this mean um and and let's get into that to start the talk with what do we even mean by like massive scalable or or massive scale um you see this is this is something we need to identify to to begin the presentation so here here's what i posit here's what i propose um when you start a product or when you work in a team usually you find yourself for the intents and purposes of this talk at one of three possible areas of scale uh, with your product or your company or what have you. Um, you may have seed scale, that is you're just kind of initial, you're getting started, you maybe don't have users, you're in beta, you're just you know trying things out. You may be in startup scale, this is where you have users, maybe a few hundred or a thousand and people are using your thing, you've got some tech infrastructure going, it's working. And, and you're not nervous about getting paged at like 3 a.m., right? Or you may be at substantial scale. So you may be at um, enterprise tier, um, you know, lots of users. You might be one of the, the fangs of the world, right? Facebook, Amazon, Apple, Netflix, Google, Microsoft, Spotify, whatever. Um, you might be either at seed or at startup or at substantial. And so when we say massive scale in this presentation, we mean like, you know, you're good past Spotify size, right? How do we get there? How do we enable apps there? How does React and Next.js and Vercel and Zeta, how do we play in that arena? Because candidly speaking, I am immensely grateful for the value uh, that, that Vercel and Next.js provide for getting started. Like it's, it's phenomenal. I mean, even before Vercel, right? If you remember Zeit, you type in one command now, enter, boom, your stuff's live. What? How? Um, with Next.js, npm install, react, react dom next, um, create pages slash index.tsx, boom, you have a web page. What? So the getting started experience is phenomenal. And then what Next.js and Vercel will do is follow you from seed scale to startup scale. There's a ton of startups built on Vercel and Next.js um, working. To, to this day, Zeta is actually one of them. Um, so that's phenomenal. And then, you know, what Vercel and, and, and Next.js will do is, is, is also follow you through to substantial scale if you want. As far as I remember, Kendrick Lamar's website is, is on Vercel. I know Apple uh, has some stuff on, on I think, Next.js. So like, it'll follow you through to substantial scale. So now how do we do that? How do we enable that um, um, for data? Right, and, and so that's kind of the gist of the talk. Massive scale, Jamstack, zero friction, developer experience, let's go. Um, one of the claims I wanna make is, is that Jamstack apps usually have similar functionality. Jamstack apps usually have similar functionality. Now, consider with me, three apps, you may consider them Jamstack apps because they are quite literally built with JavaScript, APIs and markup or you may not, either way, they're, they're applications that use or are built on the web. Consider with me Wordle, consider with me Tinder, consider with me Uber, okay? So you've got a game, a dating app, and a ride-sharing like taxi app, okay? Um, built with similar technology, like if you zoom out, there's a lot that's the same, um, especially there's, 
multiple cross-cutting concerns. And so what we want at Zeta, what I want personally, is to have a lot of these cross-cutting concerns handled. Why? Because across these different companies, you have a bunch of teams um, reinventing wheels often. That is, of course, until there's a standard way to deploy or a standard React framework. <clears throat> um, we keep reinventing the wheel. Uh, so what I want to do in this talk is identify what are these cross-cutting concerns uh, before we can then talk about how you know they're, they're solved. So let's do that. Um, what are the concerns? So Next.js and Vercel, I don't know if I'm allowed to keep the logos rotated like this, um, but there's a point to it, I promise. Uh, Next.js and Vercel solve some of these problems. So cross-cutting concern in these apps, in many apps. Number one is, is routing, right? You have the concern of routing, which Next.js, by having opinions, will solve. Pages slash file name is your route public slash static asset is the path to your static asset on an HTTP environment. So, so by having opinions, Next.js gives you the solution to routing in a standardized way and tons of companies benefit. Um, number two, Vercel as a platform solves the cross-cutting concern that is deployment. Like you just run a command, Vercel, boom, it's live. Connect a Git repository, Boom, it's live. So the concerns of routing that pretty much every app has, um, or deployment that how do you have an app if you don't deploy it, those through these tools are solved well. I think there's an outlier, right? And this outlier is the data, is the data. And so where is, where is my solution to not have to reinvent, and I don't mean database, right? I mean, where is my solution to not have to reinvent the wheel for data infrastructure as a whole? And I'm talking, you know, database, Redis, search engine, OLAP, analytics, where is that? That is, that is missing. Um, but before we dive in, let's talk about these first two concerns of routing and deployment, and then we'll move to the data piece. Um, what I want to do is talk specifically about routing. Routing, you know, React is a beautiful tool, right? React is a is a library with like protection against scope creep, right? React will not ship its own router. React will not ship its own data layer. React is like, no, no, no. Listen, we make building UIs good. Period. <laughs> if you want to fetch data, SWR, React Query, what have you the ecosystem will help you, but React has a very nice limited scope, which is actually beautiful because it can do its job well without doing too much. Um, thankfully, this gives way to frameworks like, like Next.js, Remix, or even um, libraries like React Router, for example. What I want to do to understand the complexity of routing, look, it's, 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 a, it's a talk about developer education. Okay, so let's just educate ourselves. Let's, let's see if we wanted to build our own router. Uh, let's just see what that would take and then just marvel at, at how Next.js and these solutions save us. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to switch to the laptop here. Um, you will see my presentation, whatever, it's fine. Yes, this is my slide. Um, but let's let's move to the editor. And what I wanna do is let's create like a, if I can call it this, a poor man's router, okay? So what I'll do is npm in it. This is literally like, look, there's nothing here. It's an empty project. So we'll npm in it. Um, and we'll npm install, um, I don't know, like, Let's react, react dom, parcel, TypeScript. Like, I'm just installing everything, dev dependencies, dependencies, whatever. I don't care. Types react, types react dom. This should be good. Um, running npm install in a conference talk on questionable Wi-Fi. Is he doing that? Yes, he is. Anyway, um, I, think, I think it'll be fine. Let's come back here and look. It should be done any minute now. Is it done? Let's take a look, see. Nope, it's not. Um, but hey, it's it's coming. In fact, if I could time travel and speed up this video, I would, but it's fine. This is gonna take like just a couple seconds more. And we are good, awesome. So we have some stuff, let's go to work. So now, let's take a look. We have package and package lock. Let's get started. We'll create a two files, index. let's bump that font size. Index.html serve as our root. 
Um, we can even just get started with some code in here. Um, this one, let's give it a title, my poor Boro man's router. And we'll add a script tag, um, index.tsx type is mod module and we'll add a div id root to tell react where to hydrate okay perfect um, now of course we need an index.tsx so what i'll do is index.tsx and let's get to work so let's just do everything in one file because we're building a poor man's thing anyway what we'll do is import uh, create root from react dom slash client we'll say root is um Pre exact. Wow, copilot. Awesome. All right, and now we'll root.render app, which, what is that? So let's create that. Um, let's just, for the sake of making sure everything's working, just do a hello next.js conf. All right, so we, let's, it's giving us red underlines because we don't have React. This is fine. Okay, save. This looks good index looks good let's try and run this with npx parcel index.html um, okay 400 milliseconds what do we have great it works um, but we're building a poor man's router here so what does it take to have a router um, we would need a way of knowing like the path we're at and then if the path matches show stuff this is a, a poor man's right we just want to understand the complexity of reinventing the wheel here there's a point i promise so we come back to the laptop hello next.js conf let's um create some routes so what we want to do is um add some links to start with so we'll do ahref slash about sure slash twitter maybe um, we'll do this and then we will add Hmm. We need a we need a route component. All right, let's do that. So, const route is a component. In fact, it's a function component. Ooh, what was that? Come back. Function component that has props with children, and it really just needs a path, which is a string prop. We're using TypeScript here. I hope you don't mind. If you do mind, I can't help you. Um, so, what what do we want to do here? If um, path equals 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 current path then return children right and children will come from props um, otherwise return null so if the path matches whatever the current path is we show it the problem is um, ooh, this looks that this looks pretty bad huh let's maybe fix that um, by using semantic HTML to the rescue um, do some allies, some UL. Oop, that's not an element. UL is here. Boom, boom. Ah, uh, much better. Okay, so this is we don't know what current path is, and also it's declared but never read, which is which is fine because this is a bit nonsensical. So we need a way to get the current path. The current path is considered context. So we'd have to use some type of context object. So let's let's create that. Um, let's do const router context equals create context and we'll say you know this just literally has the current path which is the empty string by default um cool so now we can say current path is use context router context boom all right so far so good um i i, I like it except the router context, our app here is not given the context. It's not wrapped in the provider. So let's create a provider. Router provider. Um, and what it is is a router context dot provider that wraps children. This is a function component that has props with children. Nothing else. Okay, and so we get children here. Awesome. But now you can see it wants a current path. So current path, we can also give it a prop maybe. Current or initial path string. And then we'll get the initial path in props. And value is current path is, it's not initial. 
never mind. We'll make this from the props. Okay. And then we'll just destructure. Perfect. All right, this looks good. So now we have a provider to provide context. Let's wrap our app with it. Just like that. You notice there's a prop missing. So we're client inside rendering. So we can easily say that we get the current path from window.location.pathName. Okay. Um, good. So everything's wired up. We're just not using the routes. Um, and it doesn't know what path is, which is a prop. I should maybe get it from here. Okay. So let's use this route component now. Um, what we want is, let's go to section. Um, and we'll do route path. If I'm on about, then show these things. Lorem, maybe I can do something like this. Uh, and for another route, if I'm on Twitter, um, I can show like, you know, follow me. <laughs> okay. So does it work? So far, yes. We're not on a path, so we see nothing. But if we go to about, okay. And then Twitter. Okay, so we built a router in one file. That kind of works. Does it work on here? Does it work on full page loads? Let's, so it does. The problem though is in my markup, there's absolutely nothing. And that is because this is rendered fully on the client side. Now, if we wanted to render it on the server side, we, we can add, um, we can add some stuff. So we can, instead of, giving the current path here, we can actually create another file, call it server.tsx. Um, let's just npm install express here as well. Um, and now, yeah, yarn next dev. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm so used to next yes. npx uh, parcel index HTML. So now what I'll do is I'll import express from express um, start my express app like this and I'll app dot get path, right? Um, and I have request response and what I'll do is, um, path is rec dot params. Sure. I can actually just destructure. Let's do this. Oops. And now what I can do is, um, render to pipeable. Let's just use use TypeScript from React DOM server, render to pipeable, what? Render to pipeable stream like this. We'll render our app exactly the same app as here to pipeable stream, and then we'll just pipe it to res. So this is how we'd server render. Of course, we'd export these things. So I'd export router provider. I'd export app. It's convenient that everything's in one file. Don't do this in production. Um, router provider, app, right? Um, is, is app missing some type of prop? I need React. This is just a, you don't actually need React if you have Next.js configured properly, but anyway. So this is fine, this works. And instead of window, since I don't have it, I can do like rec.path. And boom, I have server rendering, right? So yes, this is good, but Will this see me at seed scale? Will this work at seed scale? Sure. This is kind of seed scale. Kind of works. Will this work at startup scale? Look, I have, I have client rendering. I have server rendering. It will work to some degree at startup scale. But what if I start accumulating users? What if I start getting a bunch of users? Um, I, I'm scared of pager duty with this. No doubt it'll work, but should I? I? I'm not so sure, okay? Will it work at substantial scale? Absolutely not. Shut the front door, send it out. It's not gonna work. This, this, is, this will break, especially as you onboard a bunch of engineers, as you grow, you're like, why, are you, why aren't you using Next.js? Why? No. Um, so this kind of approach, appreciable at seed scale, kinda okay at startup scale, not good at massive scale. What's the alternative? Coming back to the topic of routing, the alternative is of course, to rely on, to stand on the shoulders of giants, to lean on tools, Next.js, open source tools, Remix, React Router, that's why they exist. And with Next.js and Vercel, it's a solved problem at all three levels of scale. Um, Vercel, specifically Next.js, even has this layouts RFC that's gonna take it to the next level. There's a lot happening. 
at that level of scale. I hope this has given you, really the reason I even did this little exercise is to give you a little window into the complexity and the edge cases that exist that if some other team has their full-time job dealing with, then we don't have to, okay? Moving on, um, let's talk about deployment. Um, I mean, as the second pillar, like if we kind of go back to the, the butterfly analogy here, right? Deployment, I feel like, look, it's, it's a conference organized by Marcel. <laughs> like, why do I, I feel like I don't even need to talk about this, but for posterity, I will. This cross-cutting concern across Uber and, and, and Tinder and, and um, Wordle uh, handled at Vercel. Does it work at seed scale? Yes, yes, it does. You can, you can run a command, Vercel, seed scale, you're good. Does it work at startup scale? Zeta is evidence that it does. Does it work at substantial scale? Yes, in fact, how it works, if we look a little bit under the hood, part of it is this awesome offering with Vercel's Edge, right? Vercel has a content delivery network where your code can be served from geographically a lot closer to users. Therefore, they get their stuff faster. The geographical distance, um, light needs to travel. The internet travels across the speed of light. If you didn't know that, now you know. But speed of light is a real limit. So the shorter the speed of light distance is, the faster people are gonna get their stuff, the happier they're going to be. I feel like with Next.js and Marcel, deployment is a solved problem. Connect to Git repository, forget about it. You can tweet that. Um, that then leaves, right, the third pillar we talked about, data, data. Um, and, and this is important. You know why it's important? Because we just implemented in the front end a router. We deployed it. So we have all this front end power, right? But what happens when the back end is needed? Which, of course, you need a back end for apps. Like, Wordle stores the answers of all the words in your browser. Some would say they're using the browser as a backend store. I don't know if the, I agree with that, but typically if you're building something like Wordle and you want to keep the words secure in some foreign system, you'd need a backend. Uber needs a backend. Tinder needs a backend. Um, what is being done for data? What is being done to facilitate um, true full stack deployment? You see, because Vercel and Next.js are awesome uh, where the front end is concerned, uh, but what do we need? to go full, full stack. And you know what I mean by full, full stack here? I, I, I mean, there's a ton of developers these days um, that are really great on the front end and kind of lacking on the back end, or great on the back end and lacking on the, so full stack is a loaded term because here, this is a slide from Swix at React Miami. And this is his take on a full stack developer. Here, let me zoom in. That, that here, <laughs> that's like, um, yes, yeah, so that's kind of what we see with a full stack developer. So if we come back to this, this butterfly, routing, deployment, and data, um, this is where Zeta fits in. A lot of people call Zeta like the next JS of databases or the Vercel of database. That's kind of what we want to be. The, the backend that feels as nice and premium to use is next JS and Vercel. In fact, I'd like to show you that uh, right now. Um, but again, I, the goal is not adoption. I don't really care if you use it. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I want to show you what it is and then talk through how we build it uh, using Next.js to kind of give you an appreciation and an idea for the problem we're solving and how we solve it for education so you can grow in your career and do all the things. Okay, so um, let's get into this demo. If we come to the laptop again, um, this is what Zeta looks like. It says launch your first workspace. A workspace is kind of like a team or an organization in GitHub. So if we add a workspace, I don't know, what should I call my team? I'll call it Tim Newtkin's fan club. <laughs> um, and so now I have this. And so in Zeta, I want to create a database. So add a database. I would call it stuff. So I'm creating this database. And just like instantly, the database exists. That's really all I need. Um, I want to add a table to it. Zeta is schema full. So I'll create a, data, a table here and I'll call it a demo database. So Zeta will help me kind of understand what's needed uh, or how it works. So now it created for me so a demo database. I have two tables, posts and users. I can explore the schema here and kind of look at how they connect to each other. I can see that author and posts is connected to users. Great. Um, and I can look, this actually looks pretty nice. This is a database, believe it or not. Um, and so what I can do is I can maybe say, you know what, I don't want any of these columns, except I just want the title. 
this looks good to me. So now I want to query this thing and use it in my Next.js trademark app. So I will go over here to get code snippet. Um, and I'm just going to give myself some credentials. So I'll say yes, and I'll copy the snippet. And literally from my own browser, I can go here I can paste. And I get back the data exactly as I see it here. I get an ID and the titles, gender queer, IB male, gender queer, IB male. I get back exactly what I'd expect. Um, this is pretty nice because the time from provision to query is pretty virtually nothing. And now I can take this back in this database, use it in my next JS app, and I'm ready to go. Um, but why even stop there? Like, look, I can, I even get a playground where I can play with, with TypeScript. Literally, I can like run this. Um, it uses real live production data, but you know, whatever. And I get back the data. In fact, it's, it's type safe. So if I have a, like a user's table, it knows. So I can't like mess up this or it's going to yell at me. What you don't have that table, for example. Um, it goes even more than this. Like I could use the CLI to Zeta in it. Um, and it will ask me like, what database do you want stuff? I can generate TypeScript code so I can query it in a type safe way. And it will pull down a JavaScript client for me or TypeScript client in this case for me to use. So that thing that I did in the playground, I just copy paste snippets into my editor and it'll work. Um, we do support the notion of branches with your database, just like Git, you can open pull requests and everything. Um, and lastly, what I wanna show you is I can literally like from the CLI edit my schema um, and I can like add another table from here. So I can just add a table next JS, hello. Um, and in my table, I can add a column. The column name is um, Tejas, it's a string. I don't know why, enter. And when all of this is done, I will run this migration. Yes, it's creating a table and uh, it exists, right? That's the developer experience we're going for. And what I can even do is run a command Zeta random data. And so I can do random data table is um, next, what is it called, next JS? And it will just like insert, boom. I have, I have data, I can once again, query this um, with temporary credentials, either in my console, in curl, whatever, um, and I get back stuff. So that's kind of what we're doing. And that's the developer experience we're trying to create um, to mimic and really complete the ecosystem of, of powerful Jamstack tooling. But I, I, that's a, maybe an impressive demo and you want to check it out, cool. But this is about your education and about how we're doing this um, to help you understand what a lot of these companies do. Um, and I'd like to show you that here in, in our time together. So if we come back here, Excalibur, wonderful tool. So considering again, Uber, Tinder, um, and Wordle, maybe not Wordle, but any company with a database, right? The wheel is reinvented a lot, kind of like routing in React before Next.js, kind of like deployment before, you know, Vercel or Zite. Um, the wheel keeps being reinvented. What wheel? This wheel. So you start with a database. Uh, why is this line so dark? <laughs> it's really like not, let's, uh, let's try this again. So you start with a UI actually, some type of UI, deploy with Vercel, um, talks to an API, maybe a Next.js API route, right? Um, underneath is a database. And so this sometimes will, will do the job, but oftentimes what you will need is you'll probably need to distribute your API to load balance. And as data demands add up, you will want to scale your database, maybe at first vertically, but at some point that will run out of steam, and then you'll need to deploy horizontally. This is already getting really complex because you need to deal with primary replica consistency and so on. But then as you grow, you're going to collect a lot of data volume. And when you have a lot of data volume, you need a way to find it. Can you imagine Instagram without a search engine? So you're going to need a search engine. This makes up data infrastructure. So we'll, we'll add here search. Now you have the complexity of like, how does the database replicate into the search engine? How does my app talk to the search engine? Um, is, should we distribute the search engine? And you'll think, okay, that's great. It works. 
but it's still slow. This will not make it to substantial scale happily. Why? Because databases often read from and write to disk. What is faster than disk? Exactly. So you'll need another piece of data infrastructure. You will need some type of in-memory store, maybe a Redis or something like this. And then, you know, you'll have your API to talk to that first. And if it's a cache miss, then go to the database. It's a whole story. But then you want visibility into what's happening here as well. So you'd need some type of like online analytics processor. It's probably distributed as well. And all of these things need to feed into it. Oh my word. Um, and of course you'd need some type of, whoo, you need some type of dashboarding tool, maybe a Grafana or something. And so look, look, check, check, check this out. This is your, whoa, that's a, very confused line. Anyway, so this wheel keeps being reinvented, like literally. Um, and and we like the example of Next.js. It's like, hey, we have opinions about routing. Use it. Your life gets easier. You can actually build Tinder faster without implementing routing. You can build Uber faster without implementing routing. Not that they use Next.js, by the way. I just keep coming back to these companies with Vercel. Right, hey, you don't need to roll your own deployment. We'll do it for you. Um, and with Zeta, data infrastructure, we got you. Um, if you want to build a dating app, if you want to build a rideshare app, we got you. So that's kind of the, the gist. And this is, this is here, look again, this is the underlying way of how it's built. One implementation detail is we use Kafka to replicate the DB into search as a queue. So actually this is more, we can squeeze Kafka in there. This is more indicative of, of our infra under the hood um, that we kind of rent out to people. Um, but the guarantee is you don't need to pay a team of DBAs. You just kind of use a free product or pay as you go or whatever. So it, it saves complexity in exchange for convenience. Let's wrap up this presentation. I'm a little bit over time. I apologize. Um, let's go to the presentation. So we just finished up the demo. Um, let's wrap things up. So we looked at how it's built and what we're learning from Next.js. Let's talk takeaways. Takeaway number one, um, wheels don't need reinvention, right? I feel like we should be good to stand on the shoulders of giants and actually build the products we want to build um, instead of keep having redundant Groundhog Day discussions. Next.js helps this, Vercel helps this, with Zeta, we're aiming to help this. Number two, product focus is the goal. If you spend your time focusing on what database to choose, what deployment platform to use, what React router to use, you kind of lose sight of your product. For us, the goal is to enable people to focus on the products. And lastly, um, we believe that opinions facilitate productivity. Next.js allows us to move so fast because routing, just, you know, you have, uh, what is it? You have a directory pages slash something, good. That opinion allows us to be productive. Um, at Zeta, as an abstraction layer on databases, we try to have the strong opinions so that people can just follow a pattern and build the apps they want. Um, and with that, I want to say, hey, thank you so much for, for having me.